Okay, this is, gee, I think it's video 14. Um, we're in the process of just annotating our printout, and we're looking right here at um, the representative sort for um, factor 1 in our centroid extraction hand rotation. Right, so here's our negative 5, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. So I just like to do this. It just makes it a little easier for me as I go through and look at well, I think I need to get one more in there. Maybe one, two, three, four. But you get the general idea. So that'd be three, one, two, three, four. Oh, somehow I didn't get four in there. But anyway, and then right now this is a PDF. I'm just saving it and annotating if I come down a little bit, here's the normalized factor scores for view number two. And I can do the same kind of thing, right? So here are, just using my little typewriter tool on Adobe. So here's my, oops, no, not minus, plus. plus five and plus five right and I can go down and I should probably make my font a little smaller so it actually fits in here right and I can just do this one two three four right and then I have um get underlined so one two three four so this is my cutoff right and then have one two three four this is my next cutoff And I might do something like that to help me out, right? So I feel comfortable learning to use new software. Online discussions are not helpful for my learning. Ooh, a typo. I enjoy reading research studies. I want to learn about Q methodology. <clears throat> um, I believe quantitative are two separate. Oh, well, that would be interesting. I feel like a confident researcher. So we see different aspects here. One of the things that might be especially helpful for this particular study I usually don't use the descending array differences but what I want to go to is to find the distinguishing statements those are going to be the statements that distinguish factor one from factor two there won't be a table for distinguishing statements for factor two because we only have two factors. So the statements that distinguish factor one from factor two also distinguish factor two from factor one. So here we have some of the big differences. So we have a plus five for statement 26. I think I will be performing research in the future, right? So state, or factor one says absolutely. And factor two says not, not, doesn't look that way. Minus two, I enjoy learning new things, right? Literally on opposing ends, right? I am in, interested in performing my own research, plus five and a minus one. So we can see some pretty big differences between factor one and factor two. And let's make sure that we, yeah, so we, and then there's some, significance so these are very all that really means is there's a big difference between those statements if we look here right these are technically different <clears throat> sometimes I feel confused by terms used in qualitative research right <clears throat> here we have zero and here we have a plus two right not not huge differences but overall right this looks like like these are a little more neutral I should say right Generally, it looks like they're quite different. <clears throat> then it also creates consensus statements. Those that don't distinguish between any pair. This does something. It's a similar calculation to uh, how we figure out distinguishing. It ends up, just because of some weird things, <clears throat> that uh, how it gets calculated, that sometimes we end up with statements as consensus that are also in the distinguishing list. So a good example of that would be right here. 